Hello, I'm Mr. Drew. I'm head of PE, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how we can make um, PE revision a little bit more um, successful and what sort of things you could be doing to help your students, your, your children. Um, just to let you know about how the course is broken down. So there are a practical element to it. So you have three assessed sports, each worth 10% of the final mark. Um, one individual sport, one team sport, and then a third from either section. These students need to be participating in each sport on a weekly basis, getting their skill levels up and working on their competitive part in those games. Um, there's a copy of the grading criteria in um, the PE Google Classroom, which students have access to, but also just to, this is the sort of thing that people can look at. So it goes through the various sports. So students need to be familiar with their three sports, about what they're going to be assessed in. This is for football. Um, so you can see the passing, receiving, the dribbling, moving with the ball, shooting at goal or wing play, heading, tackling, jockeying. And these are all areas that people need to focus in when they're doing their practicing. Separate for a goalkeeper. And it also gives you the skill breaking down the criteria as to what you need to be doing to get a level 9 out of 10, for example. And then um, the other gradings here, so for a 7 and 8, a 5 out of 6. So I would certainly suggest that students have a good idea about this one here. That's the skill part. And then the full context part out of 15. And again, what do students, well, where do they think there are perhaps highlight aspects that they can do well at? And then areas that they feel that they need to do get improved upon, maybe using their weaker foot, for example, in football, um, to develop that into, um, try to get to the next sort of level. Okay, so that is um, the, the practical side of things. We have um, students need to be coming along regularly. I don't mind whether they um, take part in these sports inside of school or outside of school. But um, what we can offer here, so you have um, on a Tuesday, you've got football and badminton taking place. On a Wednesday, there's hockey and basketball. And on a Thursday, there's netball and some can come out and work on some rugby skills um, if they wish to in that time too. <clears throat> so um, it's very important, especially in netball. We've got a lot of boys who've taken to, um, to use netball as their third sport. Um, they're quite new to this sport and as such their knowledge and skills are perhaps um, requiring a little bit of attention so thursdays after school is a must for anybody um, wanting to be assessed in netball um, there will be some requirement for some video evidence to be compiled for any sport that needs to be um, demonstrated outside of school um, activities like this include swimming dance equestrian activities skiing um, cricket and also probably rugby union and hockey whereby um, we're going to struggle to fulfill the numbers in a school of a high enough standard um, of the competitive thing, because your opposition needs to be strong in order for people to um, get the level of um, competition worthy of the higher marks. Um, so for all videos, students need to introduce themselves at the start to the camera, um, show their number if they're playing in a, in a match, and then their candidate number two. And I would like all videos to be handed to me by the end of January at the latest, preferably before Christmas. Um, so this is how people get marked. So even if you've, you're a high level player, the people will get judged purely upon what people can see in the video. So if there's a match whereby you don't get on the ball much, then another one will need to be done as well, whereby the player is, is shown off in their best light. This is how people will get graded, that's very important. So a further 10% is their student's analysis performance, which we began in year 10. Um, we're going to revisit this soon um, and also then to do the second part of it between this half term and Christmas. And then the final 60% is broken down into two exam papers, each worth um, 30%. We're going to have two mock papers taking place. Um, one, one of the first ones will be in December and again just before Easter. Um, it's important that students are revising hard for these. All right, We have revision sessions that are going to take place on Thursday lunchtimes with Miss Stone. And again, like before, I would be using the checklist to make sure, um, again, that students, this is areas that people can um, be used upon. So this is, again, referring back to the specification. So again, this is areas that people can use. So use a highlighter, again, to be checking areas that you can do. So use this as a checklist um, for when it comes to things. So if there's an area that you feel that um, they're not very comfortable at, you're not comfortable at, that might be an area to focus in on when it comes to doing extra revision. Um, I would suggest that each student purchases a revision guide. This is the one that we've been um, focusing on mainly. So it's called My Revision Notes. Again, it's very important that it's AQA GCSE 9 to 1, not OCR or Edexcel, but AQA GCSE 9 to 1 version, not the old A star to C. Right, this is from Kirk Bisley. 
and we've inside it you can see there's various um, picture diagrams it goes through lots of um, written evidence and you've also got various exam tips to take place and then some various questions that people can use um, as well so now test yourself those sorts of questions i think that's a good purchase so that's seven pound thirty if you don't have one or if you can borrow one from a previous student then all the better okay um, there's also more and more um, revision guides coming onto the market this is now the third year of the um, the new GCSE but just again make sure that please that it is um, for AQA GCSE and not another um, exam board okay there's also one or two revision sites that people might want to have a go at the GCSE bite size is a good one here whereby you've got various um, breaks it down into some revision areas and then from the revision sides for the muscular system you can then go through and then test yourselves on some of the areas just to see again. So use this as a starting point. Um, there's also another aspect called um, Seneca, which is quite new to us, but this might be something we start to use a little bit more of in the classroom. So again, it breaks it down into the various topics, applied anatomy and movement analysis and so on. And again, it's got nice picture diagrams and goes through various nice definitions. Okay, so this is an important um, um, little phase of um, learning coming up so make sure people are revising hard for their exams um, I would love to see as many parents as possible in the parents evenings coming up in November so please make an appointment with myself Mr Drew and Miss Stone for the theory side okay thank you very much